Let's go through the basic installation procedure for PDM standard. But before we begin, a quick caveat. This video will guide you to install the necessary PDM standard components, but does not cover administrative training or implementation of a new vault. If you're not a trained PDM administrator, we do not recommend attempting to put PDM standard into production use without a professional implementation. Now, before we begin, there's a few basic components we need to be aware of that are required for PDM standard to function. A network license manager must be installed, and any PDM standard licenses should be added to it. Keep in mind there may be a separate PDM serial number for every license of SOLIDWORKS Pro or Premium, so there might be quite a few. Separate videos covering the installation and adding licenses to an existing license manager are linked below in the description. The archive server, database server, and the SQL Express server, along with the optional but recommended client install, can all be performed at the same time, and that's what we're going to do today. Double check the system requirements. Notice that Windows Server 2012 R2 and SQL 2012 support was dropped for the 2020 version. The installation media for SOLIDWORKS is required, and if a firewall sits between the server and the clients, make sure the following ports are opened for TCP and UDP traffic. But we'll get started by simply running the installation manager for SOLIDWORKS and choosing to install server components and choose the PDM server. Click Next, and we've got a few options to select, starting with the type of server. I'm installing PDM Standard. The default location is going to be fine for this installation. Archive and database servers are required, and a client is highly recommended. Because this will be the server, you must also install or attach to a SQL Express instance. Note that SQL Express is the only version of SQL that PDM Standard is allowed to use. I don't have a local instance of SQL Express, so I'll install a new instance, name the instance, and create a password for the SA user that conforms with the password policy. Document this password and all future passwords to keep them safe. On the summary screen, I see that everything looks good, so we'll install now. And if you receive an installation error, it's often related to SQL Express. Try rebooting your computer or install SQL Express directly to get more information or contact support for assistance and make sure to send in the logs. I'll finish the installation and the archive server configuration is immediately shown. The first path shown is where the archives will be stored. So put this on a drive with enough storage for the archive to store all versions of all files. Next, it's asking for the default admin password. This is the password for the admin user in the PDM login. It's not a Windows login user or group. Enter the SQL SA password created earlier, and if needed, adjust group permissions for users and groups. Installation is now complete, but we don't have a vault yet. So launch the administration tool for PDM. To create a vault, right-click on the name of the server computer and choose Create New Vault. I'm making one here just to confirm that my installation was successful. This isn't necessarily a recommendation for how to set up a production vault. We'll give it a name, just PDM in this case. The archives folder was specified earlier, so we'll click Next there. Choose the SQL database we want to use, and it'll give it a database name that matches the vault name. That's a good idea so that you can keep track of which one belongs to which table. Add the location of the license manager. Should be 25734 at the name of the computer where the license manager is installed. Set the date format. Choose a vault configuration to start with. There are a few example vaults in there, or you can use an exported vault from another system, or just start with a completely blank one. Everything looks good, so I'll click Finish, and the vault was created successfully. To view or interact with the vault requires a vault view, a locally cached copy of the folder structure. So right-click on the vault name and choose Create Local View. You'll do this procedure on every client you do. I recommend putting it on the root drive of the local machine and making it accessible to all users. The admin account will have the default password specified earlier so you can log in this first time. And this is what the vault should look like when it opens successfully. If you want to test to make sure it's working a bit further, add a folder or add a file and then check it in to make sure that the client interacts with the server correctly. If user computers are having trouble connecting to the server like the client on the server did, check the firewall ports. Now that the installation is complete, 
there's still going to be a lot of work remaining to decide how to set up and configure this vault, load the data, and train the users. If you'd like to learn more about our implementation services, visit our website at mlc-cad.com. Thank you.